Hello everyone. Welcome to the Women in Agriculture series presented by NL Young Farmers and Agriculture in the Classroom, NL. Today we will be heading to Deer Lake on the province's west coast. We will be speaking with Pauline Davenvorden, co-owner of Barn Fine Eggs and Headline Holsteins. Let's go! My name is Pauline Davenvorden. I'm co-owner with my husband Phil McLean of uh, Barn Fine Eggs and uh, Headline Holstein. So that's a, an egg farm and a dairy farm. The eggs are in Deer Lake and the dairy farm is in Little Rapids. My role on the farm is largely now administrative. Uh, I work on both farms uh, in a veterinary capacity on occasion and uh, I do employee the human resources part of things and all the accounting work and uh, walkthroughs and just making sure that the details are covered on both farms. I came to Newfoundland in 1986 following graduation from the Ontario Veterinary College in Guelph, Ontario. I was hired as large animal veterinarian for Western Newfoundland which meant from Port of Bass to St. Anthony and I worked as a large animal uh, practitioner for approximately 10 years. 1989 we bought our first cows and started dairy farming and uh, in 2017 we got chickens and so it's been a long evolution of uh, being in agriculture in the province. I've been in the agriculture industry really since uh, when I was a child because I grew up on a dairy farm in New Brunswick and I've seen significant change uh, in how farms have become more efficient, more productive and utilized increasing levels of technology over the years to, to gain, uh, make progress. That's happened on the dairy side that I'm very familiar with when we were working with bucket milkers and the haying was done with an awful lot of manual labor. To today's um, operations that have robotic milking systems, lots of on-farm software, automatic feeding systems. Um, on the egg side, it's been more recent since I've been in the industry, but we have significant uh, levels of technology employed here, alarm systems that tell us about temperature issues in the cooler or in the barn, if there are issues related to water uh, for the birds, um, and so t uh, even the egg gathering system is on a belt and conveyor system. and. Uh, each, each step has improved over, over the number of years. One of the largest improvements in technology has been the ability to gather information in a real-time manner. And as a result, we have uh, apps on our phone, one for the dairy and one for the layers, to alert us to uh, issues that are either on farm, but also to gather information uh, uh, from each, in, on the dairy side, from each individual cow related to reproductive status, production, health, and we can all access from our smartphones. And the layer side, uh, if the power goes out, we know immediately, and we will also know immediately within 30 seconds that our generator has uh, kicked into action so that the birds are uh, safe. So our smartphone and the data that it provides us uh, gives us a level of detail that we wouldn't even have uh, contemplated uh, years, a number of years ago. Our birds are housed in what's called an enriched housing system. Uh, it's fairly new to the industry and the entire industry is heading in that direction over the coming decade. When we built the barn, we put the birds in uh, large compartments and I call them condominiums just like uh, apartment buildings in Toronto. So they have a living room area, they have a bedroom area which is where the eggs are laid, um, they have free access to feed and water 24 hours a day, they have an area where there's a scratch area so that's the entertainment playground area and the birds have sufficient space um, so that they can all find their own spot but they can also socially congregate. The birds are in groups of about 78 and they stay in that group for the entire time so they know their mates and they get along well and uh, we find that the birds are very content. They have perches in there as well so they can hang out and just view what's happening in their little world and uh, yeah we've been really satisfied with 
the uh, how this housing system has been good for us and especially good for the birds. Every compartment has a nest area and 90% of the eggs are laid here. And once the eggs are laid, they roll out onto the egg belt. And from the egg belt, they travel all the way forward to the orange area, which is the egg, uh, egg elevator. The egg elevator will gently, with its fingers, raise it up to a cross conveyor. And as they go on this cross conveyor, they are carried toward the packing area. Um, this process takes about, it takes about a half an hour for an egg to get from the far end of the barn to the packing room if we continue to operate the system uh, at uh, full capacity all the time. So once the eggs come off the belts that we saw in the barn, uh, and they go on the egg uh, elevator, the orange part where the eggs are raised, up to a cross conveyor. And then they come from the barn down this conveyor, uh, collected every morning. And from the egg conveyor, they get packaged onto uh, trays. Each tray is 30 eggs each. And there are six trays in a box, what we call a box. And from trays, once they're in six, they go on to a pallet. And from the pallet, uh, once they reach, the pallet has uh, 60 boxes altogether. Once it's five tiers high or 60 boxes, it goes into the cooler. The cooler is set at between eight and 13 degrees. And the, the pallet is labeled according to the day that it was completed. And uh, from here, every Monday afternoon, the egg truck belonging to Newfoundland Eggs, Inc. Uh, comes and collects all the eggs that have been gathered from that previous seven days. And uh, from there, they go directly to Roach's Line, where they are washed, candled, graded, and packaged, and end up uh, in stores for consumers. Agriculture is a very diverse uh, industry. There's tremendous opportunity. There are levels of, in, uh, of the, within the industry that range from whether uh, it's plant production or animal production on the livestock side. There's research areas, there's food production, food processing facilities. Uh, there are uh, very interesting jobs within government that uh, are helpful in um, assisting primary producers or farmers to achieve what they're trying to achieve. So the opportunities are endless. And utilizing all the resources around you related to gathering information, gaining experience over time will really help solidify uh, a passion for agriculture. And uh, I recommend it for many people who have even the slightest interest to explore those opportunities and see if it's a fit for you. It definitely was a fit for me. Food production is a really noble uh, occupation. Recognizing it's not only making food for myself or a way of life, it, it also is a business, but it's an important business in providing food for the community, for the region, for the province and ultimately that has been a great influence on my thinking as to the purpose of agriculture in our, uh, in our country domestically and globally too and how important that is in terms of how we, uh, how we do that in a responsible, sustainable, economically viable way. It's influenced my thinking in, in those, all those aspects. Of course, in every industry there are barriers, and I think for women, the barrier in agriculture is their own self-confidence. Uh, traditionally, farmers at the primary production level and through the vertical chain as well have been largely men, but that's rapidly changing and uh, their opportunities are many. And I think as women, sometimes a level of confidence uh, is what's required to get the ball rolling. In order to get that confidence, you just find like-minded people, find women who are role models, gain experiences through those, have conversations, 
and uh, take advantage of every opportunity you can to uh, to uh, move your thought process forward in terms of trying to uh, uh, make inroads in the agricultural sectors. The opportunities are many and sometimes we're our own biggest barrier. Make the step forward, be brave and forge ahead.